In chapter 14, we will be focusing on conjugated compounds and UV spectroscopy. So our emphasis will be on dienes, molecules that have two alkenes, as well as polyenes that have more than two alkenes. Uh, we'll talk about some general information, we'll look at how to prepare them, a special method to analyze them, and then some reactions of dienes and other polyenes. On this slide, we have a few examples of dienes. So a diene has two alkenes. Uh, we could also talk about trienes, tetraenes, polyenes. We're going to focus on dienes for now. Uh, so here we have three different examples. The first one, notice we have our sp2 hybridized carbon and another sp2 sp2 and sp2, but in between we have a carbon that is sp3 hybridized. This one is called an isolated diene because the alkenes are isolated from each other. They're separated by an sp3 hybridized carbon. In the next one we have this carbon's sp2, 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 sp2. This is called a conjugated diene. So it's written as double bond alternating with single bond alternating with double bond, but the more important thing is that we have sp2 hybridized carbons all in a row. Okay, that makes it a conjugated diene. And the next one, this one looks a little bit strange, uh, so we have a carbon here, another carbon here, and a carbon here. Um, so this one is called a cumulated diene where one carbon is common to two different alkenes. So this carbon and this carbon are sp2 hybridized, but this one would actually be sp hybridized. Okay, so we have isolated, conjugated, and cumulated dienes. Similar to what we did with alkenes to name a diene or a triene, uh, we just have to specify the first carbon of the alkene. So for our first compound, we could number it left to right or right to left. So let's go one, two, three, four, five. This is one comma four dash penta diene. So penta, because it's five carbons, a diene, because there are two alkenes, starting at carbon one and at carbon four. We want to number to give the alkenes the lowest, so this one we would number left to right, not right to left. So this one is one, three pentadiene, and this one, one, two, three, this would be called one, two pentadiene. So again, we have isolated dienes where the alkenes are separated by an sp3 carbon. We have conjugated dienes which are written double bond single double, but we have continuous sp2 hybridized carbons. And then cumulated where one carbon is common to two alkenes. Now, what do we know about these compounds? Well, we can learn about them by investigating the heat of combustion. 1,4-pentadiene, to combust this, to completely break it down into water and carbon dioxide, uh, this has a delta H of 3217. 1,3-pentadiene is 3186 kilojoules per mole, and 1,2-pentadiene is 3251. So as we're thinking about combustion, these are all C5H8 plus oxygen. This is going to give us carbon dioxide and water. We can balance the equation, but the important thing is that because these three compounds all are C5H8, they're going to give us the same products in the same ratio. We can use the delta H to give us information on the starting point, right? They all end up at the same ending point, so we can use the heat of combustion to figure out the starting point. The isolated diene has a heat of combustion of 3217, so if this is the ending point, then the starting point would have been here with a difference of 3217. For the conjugated diene, this one is 3186, so this one started here, 
this is 3186. And then the accumulated diene, 3251. So that one would be here where this difference is the biggest. Okay, so what we can see here then is that conjugated dienes are the most stable, right? This has the smallest heat of combustion because it must have started at the lowest energy. So a conjugated diene is more stable than an isolated diene, and an isolated diene is more stable than a cumulated diene. So accumulated dienes are high energy, they're very unstable, they require different methods to make them, and they undergo different types of reactions. So I just wanted to introduce them, but we're not going to study them. Isolated dienes or trienes, these behave just like regular alkenes, right? Made in the same way, react in the same way, nothing special. But conjugated dienes, these are interesting. Okay, we're going to take a look at what's the reason for their stability, um, and then what does that mean in terms of preparation and in terms of reactions. Here we have a couple of electrostatic potential maps for 1,3-butadiene, which is a conjugated diene, and 1,4-pentadiene, which is non-conjugated or isolated. So with electrostatic potential maps, uh, blue is positive and red is negative. So what we're really talking about is extra electron density, right? So reddish means negative character, a lot of electron density. And if we look at 1,4-pentadiene, we can see there's red around here and around here. So there's a lot of electron density around the alkene and a lot of electron density around the alkene, but not around the central carbon that is sp3 hybridized. When we look at the conjugated butadiene, we have lots of electron density around where the alkenes are drawn, but we also have more electron density here in the central carbon-carbon bond, right? I mean, it's not red, but it's definitely more orange, so more electron density than what we have over here. We write this as a double bond, single bond, double bond, but based on the electrostatic potential map, what we see is that this actually behaves as an extended pi system. So there is electron density between these two carbons, not just the extra electron density here. So what's special about a conjugated diene or triene is that we have an extended pi system. 